sounds uh, the sounds better. It's better now. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. I think it's okay. Okay, so Simon uh, is a system engineer in uh, Ohabe Elas, means Ohabe in Greece, and responsible for technical development on next generation on-board computer architecture and high performance on-board processing. Uh, he has received a diploma in electrical computer engineering from the NTUA, the National Technical University in Athens, in uh, 2016, and he has worked from uh, 2017 to 2021 as an FPGA hardware designer for avion systems in uh, the Institute of Space Systems uh, of the German Aerospace uh, Center in TLR in Bremen, focusing on the development of uh, distributed scalable onboard computers for space uh, avionics. So, and today he's gonna talk uh, to us about um, uh, how in Ohabe in Greece uh, they try to develop the next uh, generation on uh, for onboard uh, 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 processing uh, for satellites. Okay, so Simon, uh, the stage is yours. Uh, yeah, and. Um I want to give you today the approach of uh, onboard data processing and open source on onboard data processing from the perspective of an OHDL loss. So, uh, a person to you that don't know it, it's Germany Technology and Space Corporation, and it's an, an independent uh, company in the aerospace sector that. Is uh, major space companies in Europe alongside uh, Airbus and Thales, and there is activities in things, uh, not just space systems, but also aerospace with launchers and digital services, which is the newest of the three pillars. And as you can see here in the uh, slide, there's many subsidiaries over Europe. One of which is uh, also OHB Hellas. Which we is um, one of the newest ones. We were founded in 2018 in Greece. We're fully owned by OHBSC in Germany, and uh, the establishment followed back then a uh, MOU between OHB and the General Secretariat of uh, Telecommunications and Post. Our main activities uh, on the technology domain uh, are mainly on the high performance data processing and AI on board. Uh, so that's something that we decided to do in Greece for very good reasons. Uh, I don't want to go into details now. I'll mention some things later on. And regarding the space missions, I also want to talk a bit about satellite as a service, which is one of our visions in Greece and uh, where open source comes into play a lot. Um, let's say some words now about why open source and why open source from the perspective of company like OHP and there is a need for open source in uh, Europe. Uh, my view and our view is that it's mainly uh, not just limited to but two important pillars are the new space approach that requires uh, moving away from the traditional approaches and the way we've been, we've been building satellites uh, in the past. Um, and another reason is the, a push in Europe towards technology independence, where open source can play an enabling uh, role in new developments. And of course, in order to achieve those, we need a community-based uh, approach in the developments. And that's something that's well understood uh, in Europe and in space, but uh, maybe not uh, so much in the big industrial groups like OHD, which are a bit uh, catching up on that, but uh, they can't avoid it, uh, I believe. And uh, I can give you our perspective on onboard data processing, which is our main activity here in Greece, uh, where we can see that we have uh, many uh, technologies that we use for the developments we do, uh, onboard uh, payload processing, and we use uh, software, for example, the partitioning that is open source. Uh, Jailhouse is a very good example that we are uh, using, and we're aiming to uh, use also in the future. And we can also see that RISC-V is something that is 
um, has reached space and there are developments that are also being the traditional providers of space and hardware like Cobham Geisler and MicroSemi. Uh, this open source approach is not uh, just uh, related to the shift in the space domain. So, needs in the next generation data handling systems. So, the two uh, main needs we can see is one uh, regarding flexibility, move away from using one big chunk of hardware, uh, but rather use smaller modular uh, blocks, so building blocks in order to build one uh, big onboard computer with mixed criticality, of course, since we do work uh, it's evident that COTS is being increasingly used also by big companies and targeting okay, and uh, on the software side, we do want to have uh, a system that's easy to program, uh, of course, and uh, testing is a big role on the hands, and we want to have frameworks that we can reuse and they're easier to access from a bigger pool of developers. Um, and that is very evident and something that is already knocking on our doors in some years. It's the, increased, uh, the need for increased performance on board. So we can see that new uh, satellites and new missions generate a huge amount processing is nowadays unavoidable, there's no way around it, basically. And we can see that also AI is playing an increasing role in onboard data processing, where big companies also have been more reluctant way. But even there, you can see that uh, there are developments that show that uh, it will be used and it will be used more and more. And in that uh, regard, you can see that uh, going from the ground to transferring it processing uh, in space so we have a type of cloud-based processing um, is something that would uh, also see in applications like uh, the app store applications on board I would say some words Simon there is some uh, there is some topping on your uh, uh, line on, on the, your voice. Do you want to try to uh, shut the camera? Yes. Go on. Can you hear me now? Uh, I think yes, yeah. All right, perfect. Um, exactly. So, um, satellite as a service. Let me see one moment. Okay. Exactly. So satellite as a service, that's uh, one of the reasons of, uh, believe the, the flexible onboard process big change and it is being enabled by the reconfigure of the implementations as well as the whole cloud uh, service approach. It's something that um, will uh, have a big change in the way we uh, offer services in satellite services. Um, that's quite evident, but uh, it's basically renting out uh, uh, easy access to uh, what we call And our view and our vision on that is that it will be a platform. So it's something that is open to contributions uh, from uh, other people and where any kind of satellite can potentially, let's say OHP offers a satellite as a service, it would be also open to list satellites provide or other satellite as a service as a products. And this in our economy and of course maximizes the resources in orbit that is uh, have to be answered in uh, the future with all the new um, developments and all the new satellites that which we have has decided to to um, implement the satellite as a because there is a real need uh, to do this in Greece decided out of the blue 
Um, it is um, obviously a service that has a new type of service for Europe and not just Europe, but mainly, but not just nations, also institutionals. And our goal is to rely uh, and develop and uh, the satellite as based on existing developments in Greece, um, so closely with partners in Greece, and also uh, together with uh, open source activities in Greece. So uh, we have a good Libre Space Foundation, and we do have a good uh, understanding. They are the ones actually that did uh, show us the need for uh, and source for an open source approach. I think that this has been, and as you can see here on the right, in the um, a nice overview of the proposed satellite as a service approach, the hardware and software on board the satellite, and that connected to the ground through um, and a distributed. Uh, ground network, so that's also an approach that will be from the ground uh, targeting the, this approach, so it's not just onboard processing on its own. This is something that we all in all believe that it is, will benefit not just uh, OHB as a company and the space sector, but also uh, Greece in general. Um, right, I would like to go into much more details. It was a quick overview. Uh, has uh, leaves a lot of room for for further discussions also on the companies because I think that's something that is changing just in Europe. So if you have any questions or I think during the break later on we can also have a, a more in-depth conversation if anyone has any questions on the uh, presented information now here. Questions, please feel free to ask me. Thank you. Can you hear me? So, uh, thank you, Simon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there is already a question in uh, in the chat, and uh, Arthur's uh, Arthur, do you want to put it? Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if OHB uh, is somewhere involved or observes or follows the um, the Sawa activity, which is uh, I think is a CNES led activity to define the uh, uh, on onboard reference architecture for satellites. Um. It's a, a CNES activity for defining onboard uh, processing is mentioned. Yeah, I wonder if you, if OHP. Ah, Savoir. Is... Savoir, yeah. Yes, yes, we have. Uh, OHP has uh, uh, not have a big involvement in Savoir, but we are following. So what is interesting for us is the the other. That's not the handling architecture for the standard I think we are closely following this. Okay, I didn't catch the name. Uh, can you please repeat? Yes, I can. I'll write it in the chat. Yeah. Yes, it's the. Uh -huh. yeah, but we have as a company as uh, OHB are involved in there, and OHB as OHB Hellas. Thanks. Uh, uh, Jean has uh, one more question and says, uh, was the existing open source community in Greece, uh, in parenthesis LSF, uh, a reason to set up uh, this business there? To that, I would say that um, when OHB Hellas was uh, formed in 2008, in this case, and the business was to um, 
for Greece and for OHB and for for OHB, the way that the, the company uh, deploys its subsidiaries in Europe, it's an organic way. So we have a competence that is uh, supporting the activities of the group. And it's something that you can build upon uh, existing know-how and uh, competence in the country. And we saw that onboard or that is um, advanced in Greece. And so we started working uh, on that, and that's something that we, starting then from 2018, is building up on partnerships and understanding actually the ecosystem in the country. And there we did uh, and we have a very good understanding, and that uh, has uh, influenced a lot the. Uh, Open source, I would say. Do you want to repeat your last sentence because we, I think, we lost you? Yes, I said that um, our approach it has been influenced, of course, a lot by our part. After several discussions, we did realize that it is something that is important for our developments, but it's also something that. Uh, done in Greece, and there's extensive know-how in. Okay, I think that was the, only the last thing. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, I also have a question. Do you think that uh, this can be led to a paradigm shift because uh, uh, traditional space is very closed, and the big uh, the big corporation uh, corporation space they are like uh, not uh, only they are not knowing, but they are a bit against open source because probably of the defense background. Do you think that uh, uh, like the new space is a paradigm shift and gonna lead uh, towards open source for big companies too? Um, our view on that is that it will uh, it will lead to a paradigm shift, of course, and it's a, uh, you can see that in the way that uh, the new space is, be, is drawing uh, small companies and activities, and for example, the satellite as a service is a service that has followed uh, similar approaches on terrestrial uh, applications, so Airbnb or Google applications, etc. this shift. Uh, the thing is that space in general, even though it's considered as the frontier of technological development, it's very often catching up to the activities on ground and the big companies are reluctant to change, but it will happen. Okay, okay. I also agree with you. <laughs> okay, so thank you.